Let's take a look at the direct form one flow graph implementation of a system function. Here's a specific example of what I mean. I have a system function h of z, second order in this case, and this is the flow graph implementation of that system function. These numerical coefficients somehow get involved in the specific numbers that are showing up on our flow graph. Let's see if we can better understand how to get those numbers. To begin with, let's write the system function as a difference equation. h of z can be expanded as y of z divided by x of z. y of z is the z transform of the output of our system, and x of z is the z transform of the input to our system. The system function is the ratio of two polynomials in z inverse. I'll write the numerator in the standard form using b for the coefficients. These are arranged as b0 plus b1 z inverse plus b2 z inverse squared and so forth. The denominator polynomial is similar, but now using a for the coefficients. Now we can write this more compactly using summation notation. In the numerator, we start at k equals zero and go up to m, capital M. Write this as b sub k times z inverse to the kth power. Similarly, in the denominator, to keep things general, let me write this as n instead of m. We start at k equals zero. We're actually dealing with the a sub k coefficients now and multiply that by z inverse to the kth power. Let me consider the case of n equals two, just to keep our subsequent development uh, a little bit more specific. Let me rewrite things by moving the pieces of the polynomial around to each side of the equation. And then I can apply the distributive property for y of z and x of z. Now the inverse z transform of each of these terms looks like y of n, y of n minus one. This is y of n minus two. So z inverse raised to the various powers introduces a delay. And from this we have the difference equation corresponding to our system function. Now I'd like to rewrite the difference equation in a better form for implementation as a flow graph. What I'd like to do is concentrate on how do we calculate the next output value y of n. This will be a function of both previous outputs as well as uh, current and present, or current and previous input values. Let me begin by setting a0 equal to one. Also, I'm going to redefine the a coefficients to use negative signs rather than positive signs. This way I can take all of these terms and push them off to the right side of the equation. And now I have y of n as a function of both previous outputs and the current input and previous inputs. More generally, I can again use summation notation to write this more compactly. We see that the a coefficients begin at k equals one now, run out to n. The b coefficients still start at zero though, and they run out to capital M. All right, let me put this on the other side of the equation. And let's move everything over to the z transform domain again. y of z is something that I can pull out front. Same thing for x of z. And now I see y of z is common. We rewrite this as one minus the summation. 
At this point, I can begin to identify the system function h of z, which is y of z divided by x of z. Let me take this whole expression and push that off to the right side of the equation. And this gives us the form for our system equation. Now, to implement this system equation as a flow graph, I'll begin by implementing two subsections. Let me first abbreviate everything associated with our input as w of n. We'll come back to that one in a little bit. We'll begin working on the output here. y of n is the sum of three components. The first one is based on a delayed version of y of n. So let me tap off here. So that this is y of n. Let me tap that off pass that through a unit delay, and that would produce y of n minus 1. We see in this term that we need to form y of n minus 2. We can get that by taking that delayed version and passing it through yet another unit delay, and that gives y of n minus 2. Now I'll pass that through a scaling of a, a1, and I'll take this one and scale that by a2. Now we can bring these scaled versions together. Here's our first summing point. And I'll take that result and direct that to the output y of n. So note we form first a uh, scaled version of y of n minus 2. We then add that in with a scaled version of y of n minus 1. And we're almost done. We still need to add in w of n. I'll do that right here. This becomes our second summing junction. Okay, let me push this off to the side. That's our first flow graph subsection. Now let's return to that original definition of w of n. we see that w of n is formed as the sum of these three values. And place a few arrows here, and we'll begin with x of n. x of n is scaled by b sub 0. I'll do that right here. Next, we need to form the delayed version of the input x. I'll pass that through a single delay line, and then scale that by b1, and then add that in here. Next, if I pass this through a second unit delay, and scale that by b2, then I can add that in right here. Alright, at this point we recognize that w of n is really the same thing. We can then go ahead and glue these two subsections together. And this becomes the implementation that we call direct form 1. This is a, the most straightforward implementation of the difference equation as a flow graph.